And he said, I don't care. <laughs> I don't want to know who you are. Zayd ibn Sa'na said, I'm Zayd. Ibn Sa'na, Umar radiallahu anhu said, Habr al Yahud, the great rabbi of the Jews. And he said, Yes. He said, Ma hamalaka ala hadha. What caused you to act that way? You're a great man. You're someone, the Prophet spoke highly of you. You're a scholar of your religion. We think highly of you. What caused you to act that way? He said to him, Ya Umar, I have seen all of the signs of prophethood in this man. But there, were, there was one sign that I had to test. And that it said in our scripture, يَسْبِقُ حِلْمُهُ جَهْلَةً That his forbearance is greater than his anger. And if you increase in anger towards him, he will increase in forbearance towards you. SubhanAllah. Zayd said, now that I've seen that, أَشْهَدُ وَلَا إِلَهَ اللَّهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَدَ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ And he said, I am one of the richest men in this city, and I'm donating half of my wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ didn't respond. The Prophet ﷺ could have, him, could have had him taken out. But the Prophet ﷺ did not respond that way. There were times that people physically assaulted the Prophet ﷺ. Ghawrath ibn al-Harith, who saw the Prophet ﷺ laying under a tree. And he went and he grabbed the sword. Again, in Medina, where the Prophet ﷺ is head of state. He grabbed the sword of the Prophet ﷺ off of the tree while the Prophet ﷺ was napping. And he stood on top of him. And he said, مَنْ يَمْنَعُكَ مِنِّي يَا Muhammad." Who's going to stop me now, O Muhammad? And Rasulullah looked at him and said, Allah. <laughs> Ghawrath was so shocked that Ghawrath dropped the sword. He was shocked by the intensity of that statement. How much the Prophet believed in that protection. The Prophet picked up the sword and he stood on top of Ghawrath and he said, Man yamna'uka minni al-an. Who's going to protect you from me now? He said, Kun khayra akhir. He said, be a noble man, O Muhammad Sallallahu Be generous in your taking revenge. The Prophet Sallallahu he let him go. He said, go free. You have nothing to worry about. He could have killed him. I mean, it would have been justified. But the Prophet Sallallahu wants to make a greater point. And in fact, you look at Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, a man who committed treason three separate times, who tried to remove the Prophet Sallallahu from power in Medina. Not only did he try to have him killed, he tried to take away the credibility of his leadership. He tried to delegitimize the Muslims you know, and, and, and the authority of the Prophet ﷺ. He slandered the wife of the Prophet ﷺ, and people wanted to kill him. And you know what the Prophet ﷺ said? Listen very carefully to this. He said, no. He says, I don't want people to say, listen to the tense by the way. لا يقولن أحد. I don't want people to say, that he used to kill his companions. Meaning the Prophet ﷺ is saying, I don't want to give Islamophobes in the future material. To say that he used to kill his companions. Even though Abdullah ibn Ubayim and Salul deserves to be killed by consensus, historical consensus. The Prophet ﷺ says, I don't want them to come later on and say that this is a man that used to kill his companions. On top of that, dear brothers and sisters, go back to the Qur'an. Surah Al-Ahzab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَلَا تُطِعِ الْكَافِرِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقِينَ وَدَعْ أَذَاهُمْ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ do not respond, don't entertain the insults of the disbelievers and the hypocrites. You know, da' in the Arabic language means to completely disregard their harm. Pretend they're not even speaking. Don't even listen to what they have to say. What was that ayah revealed about? When people started to make fun of the wives of the Prophet wasallam. Sound familiar? They were making fun of the marriage of the Prophet ﷺ to Zainab bin Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anha. And Allah revealed that ayah. This is deep into Medina, five years after Hijrah. Ignore them. Don't listen to them. Take the high road. And put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. billahi wakila. Allah is enough of a protector for you. SubhanAllah, look at how the Qur'an is revealing its tolerance over time through a messenger of tolerance sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes to Mecca, Fatih Mecca. He comes back now as a man who was run out of his homeland. 
and he has the opportunity to deal with all of these enemies in one shot. These are the people that ran him out, tried to massacre him and his family in Medina and his entire ummah, and the Prophet ﷺ has the opportunity to come back and to take his revenge. And subhanAllah, Al-Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ, he comes to Rasulullah ﷺ and he says, listen, can you do me a favor for Abu Sufyan? Do you guys know who Abu Sufyan is and what he did to the Prophet ﷺ all those years? He said, look, Abu Sufyan is becoming Muslim. He said, Abu Sufyan is a man <clears throat> you know, of, who takes great pride in his tribe and, and in hosting people and so on and so forth. When you enter into Mecca, he's not telling the Prophet ﷺ, don't kill him because that's a given. He said, when you enter into Mecca, when you announce places of safety, can you make the house of Abu Sufyan a place of safety? So the Prophet ﷺ enters into Mecca with his nose touching the back of his riding animal. Not a proud conqueror, but a humble man. Saying, مَنْ دَخَلَ دَارَ أَبِي Sufyan, Whoever enters into the house of Abu Sufyan, فَهُوَ آمَنْ He's safe. SubhanAllah! He still cares for the man's feelings, even though that man tried to have him killed sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of these years of warmongering, and Rasulullah still cares for his feelings. Would you care about the sensitivities of a man that has had your family killed over the last 20 years? Your Prophet has a bigger heart. Rasulullah takes the high road and he does what he has to do. The Prophet also after Fatih Mecca, after the conquest of Mecca, my time is up, but I want to give you guys this inshaAllah ta'ala. You see the incident of Fudala al Layfi. Fudala who came to the Kaaba to murder the Prophet and was concealing a dagger under his ihram, walking around the Kaaba with the Prophet. We're talking about the peak of the authority of Muhammad. He doesn't just rule a city now, he rules an entire region. And the Prophet knows that Fudala is trying to kill him. And Rasulullah asks him as they do tawaf. Ya Fudala, bima tuhaddithu nafsak? What are you talking to yourself about? Because he was murmuring and grumbling his hatred of the Prophet And the Prophet when he asked him that, he would say, Atufu I'm just making tawaf and remembering Allah. And his voice would get louder every time the Prophet asked him. And the Prophet kept asking him gently, what are you really here for? And Fudala would just say, I'm just worshipping and remembering God. And the Prophet put his hand on his chest and made dua for him. And Fudala said that he was the most hated man in the world to me before that, but he became the most beloved man in the world to me after that. He won his heart sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He could have taken the dagger and stabbed him and no one would have said a word. But the Prophet sallallahu wanted goodness for him. His heart could take that. The Prophet sallallahu had the tolerance and the compassion and the love for the same people that were insulting him to where he wanted their salvation even though they actively worked for his destruction sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Relate that to our lives. <clears throat> and I want to end with this idea. What did make the Prophet ﷺ mad? What did get him angry? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she says, وَمَنْ تَقَمَ لِنَفْسِهِ قَتْ I've never seen the Prophet ﷺ get angry for himself. I've never seen him get angry for himself or avenge himself. The only time he would get angry is when Allah's boundaries were crossed. فَيَنْتَقِمُ لِلَّهِ He got angry for Allah. And what was the anger of the Prophet ﷺ like? You could tell he was angry on his face. The narration of Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu is that the Prophet sallallahu his face would turn red when he became angry. And you know what Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says? He says that the Prophet sallallahu had a particular smile when he was angry. Can you, can you imagine that? Even when he was mad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was a particular smile that he had on his face that you could tell he was mad about. Even then he smiled sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what would the Prophet sallallahu get angry about? When did that ghadab show on his face? When did that anger show on his face? You know when? When a group of young men said, we're gonna pray all night, we're gonna fast all day, we're gonna read Quran all the time, we're, we're gonna practice celibacy. He's the Prophet sallallahu he doesn't have to do all this, i.e. extremism. And the Prophet sallallahu got angry and it showed on his face. And he used to say to them, 
I am the most knowledgeable amongst you of Allah and I am the most fearing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amongst you. That's what made him angry. Zulm made him angry. Transgression, oppression made him angry. Injustice made him angry. Injustice to a non-Muslim made him angry even in the heat of battle when the Prophet ﷺ sees a woman that was killed from the other side. On a day of battle, the Prophet ﷺ stops his army and says, who did that? Not even just a non-Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ was upset when a bird complained to him in battle. Who thinks about birds in battle? Even when a bird complained to him in battle, that someone had taken its eggs. Rasulullah stops his entire army and demands justice for that bird. You know what, dear brothers and sisters? When we get angry for the Prophet and when people start screaming and burning things down and breaking things down, are they really doing that for the Prophet or is it because you insulted me? How do you take something so precious and make it nafsi? Make it about your own ego? You insulted me. You insulted someone that I call the Messenger of Allah. It's not about him, it's about us. And if we're honest with ourselves, because if we're getting angry for Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then we will not do anything in our anger for Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that would contradict what was taught to us by Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa lakum wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa sallam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As a leader, there's many challenges you're going to face. There are going to be high days in your leadership where everything is good and low days where things are bad. It's really up to you to stay grounded and stay true to what you believe so that the people that follow you see how strong you are and how you overcome these things. Despite people insulting you, wanting to attack you, what matters at the end of the day is how you react to a situation. Someone can slap you. But how are you going to react? Someone will insult you, but how are you going to react? That's going to determine what happens next. Otherwise, how do you guys respond to when someone is rude to you in the comments? Some You comment something and someone is rude to you. How do you respond to that? How do you respond to someone that calls what you're commenting uh, black or wrong? How do you respond to that? Do you respond with kindness? Otherwise, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.